joining us now is Neil Beveridge, Senior Oil and Gas Analyst at Sanford Bernstein. And uh, Neil, great of you to come in. It's a tale of two very different oil companies, isn't it? Yes, no, we saw very strong numbers from PetroChina uh, in the first quarter. Their upstream was very, very strong, 6% production growth, very high commodity prices. And they managed to cut some of the losses that we'd seen in refining and petrochemicals. In Sinopec, we saw 37% decline on profits year on year. Uh, and again, a very different story Why? in the downstream. Well, really, it was down to very weak performance in the downstream. Sinopec is very levered to petrochemicals. And what we saw is just a collapse of petrochemical margins in the first quarter. And the reasons for that were the very high commodity prices. Remember, you need oil as the feedstock for these products. And the government. And very weak, and very weak demand, resulting in very weak pricing. What about the government's role in uh, controlling prices here as well? Well, the government's role is still playing a major part in uh, the negative earnings that we're seeing refining for both companies. PetroChina lost about $11 billion from refining in the first quarter. Sinopec lost about $9 billion. And that's a result of refined product prices, which you know, are controlled at the pump and still result in very significant losses for, for both companies. Okay, so what about the others? How do they uh, stack up to some of the other companies out there in China as well? Well, we had results earlier in the week from, uh, from CNUC, and you know, while you know, they've seen production come down year on year as a result of the largest uh, offshore field in China being shut down, Peng Lai, you know, they benefited from very strong commodity prices. And remember, they don't have exposure to the refining uh, and petrochemicals, which has really been the source of you know, a lot of the, the earnings losses for, for, for some of the majors. So you know, good revenue growth and good operating margins, and you know, we expect production growth to pick up as we go through the year. So which ones are the ones that you like the most if you were going to buy them, and would you buy the A shares or the H shares? Yeah. Well, I would still be buying um, the offshore exposed companies. So I think uh, CNUC and COSL, uh, to me, still look the best values. CNUC's trading on about eight terms forward earnings, so remaining fairly cheap and with good growth ahead of it. And remember, COSL is a way of playing you know, some of that offshore capex growth that we expect to see over the next few years. With PetroChina and Sinopec, you know, I think there's still more weakness in Sinopec, given where petrochemicals are. Uh, PetroChina is doing well, but remember, this is still a relatively expensive company, trading about 11 times earnings, which is far higher than other international majors. Why is that the case? Well, I think people are really excited about the gas growth story in China and the possibility of gas reform. Remember, PetroChina is the purest way to play gas growth in China. It controls about 80% of the market. And what we're seeing is 15% annual uh, uh, growth in gas demand. And we're also seeing the possibility of price reforms coming through. And I think that's really what's getting ex investors excited. Well, well, let's not forget that all these companies are probably going to be, have been and will probably remain uh, being pretty acquisitive as they try and grow into becoming you know, the biggest oil companies in the world, which is, I wouldn't say it's a, 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 it's a not stated goal, it is a more or less stated goal, isn't it? Yes. Well, all of these companies have massive plans to expand overseas oil and gas production. Doing this organically is going to take a long time, so I think doing this through acquisitions uh, is going to make a lot, of, uh, a lot of sense. I would expect to see uh, a significant number of acquisitions uh, later this year. I mean, there was certainly a lot of discussion around the Chinese company's involvement in Argentina. Uh, you know, prior to the, the nationalization of YPF. Yeah. But, you know, our Chinese companies are really taking a serious look at North America, looking at some of the unconventional gas, heavy oil assets, which I think are likely to be the next target. Yeah, it's all about securing China's energy needs, isn't it? And that's the stated goal. That's right. I mean, China's a, a very significant oil importer, imports more than 5 million barrels a day. And with gas growing so strongly, it's importing a lot of LNG and a lot of pipeline gas. So to really manage that energy security, firms are going global, try and acquire those resources so that China has a position on the upstream as well as the downstream. We're going to get your forecast on oil prices. WTI trading at the moment on $104.15 a barrel. We've been range-bound. Uh, how long does this range continue? Yeah, I think in the near term we still see downside risk to the oil price. Uh, demand is relatively soft. I mean, in the, the, the numbers that we saw from Better Chai and Sinopec, you know, 2 to 3 percent growth in refining throughput. I mean, that tells you how weak the demand environment is out there. Uh, so in the near term, we think prices will go down. But looking forward into 2013-14, the reality of this business is the costs are going up and all prices longer term still seem in a secular uptrend. Thank you so much, Neil. Neil Beveridge there from uh, Sanford Burst.